Welcome to the Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Peter. And we had a fun opportunity recently, didn't we? Totally, yeah, with the slides and all. Yep, a big thanks to Alex Savada. Mm -hmm. um, he was over trying to figure out what to uh, do for our next episode, mm -hmm. and we yeah. had really bad weather. And uh, because of that, he thought, let's make some sleds fly. Yeah, that's a perfect idea. It, it actually turned out being really well. It was a lot of fun. Now, of course, when we shot it, it was about, what is it, like negative five? It was ridiculous. Yeah, you started talking slow. It was, it was, it was brutal. I didn't believe you, you in, until you, mm -hmm. uh, you I watched the footage. Uh, let us know if you want to see anything else weird fly. We'd love you're to You're talking to slower. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not talking slower. I think slower. your head is frozen, I too. I can really move my cheeks. <laughs> we need to go back down. <laughs> it's getting bad now. Are you feeling it right here? Do you, you feel it, too? <laughs> I'm not talking slower. <laughs> and yeah, I was messed up. Yeah, everyone's hands are cold. Even your hands, Dave. You're all <laughs> it, was, like, it was really bad. It was, it was pretty brutal. But you know, we got to experience some really cool challenges and we got to overcome those challenges. And uh, we took two different stabs at it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What I did here on mine is uh, I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Um, if anyone knows me, I'm very passionate about old uh, old timers, old designs. And I also love the vintage air racers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see you got like the like weird, like broken Corsair mm -hmm. flip upside down. The Galway. on an airplane, yeah. There was also a plane I really badly want to turn into foam mm -hmm. and that was called the swoosh mm -hmm. it was designed back in 1989 by nick zarelli and i remember actually reading the model aviation mm -hmm. magazine uh mm -hmm. back there and looking at this plane it was a work of art mm -hmm. so i wanted to take the bulldog and the swoosh and mash them up and the nice thing about that, that definitely looks very cool <laughs> was, i don't care what when it came from it looks sweet it was weird but uh the neat thing now is i have half the wing design done so mm -hmm. i can actually carry that over to the swoosh and i don't have to work as hard to redesign it so yep. a lot of the features were there but i'll tell you the gall wing design mm -hmm. is super easy and super stable i can see why classic planes like the Spook and the Swoosh were designed with that going because it mm -hmm. lowered that center of mass. It was very docile. Yeah. There's no way we'd ever roll this thing. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> Especially you with the Zanimike that it runs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as the construction goes, it was very simple. I used the box bar and I'm really becoming a fan and I also mm -hmm. took your input. Uh, a lot of times on our designs, we, we put our popsicle sticks this way. It's the absolute wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. because it works you, okay for most of our little planes, yeah. but when you get to a big part where you don't want all that wood in there, it works well to, have, to use it with it. It's vertical. Yeah, vertical. Exactly. And that's mm -hmm. where shear webbing and things go. The reason we do it horizontal on the planes is we don't have enough spin. I don't want people having to cut down their sticks, uh, but that actually is much, much stronger. Mm -hmm. and, and it definitely showed. It, yeah. it was it from great. We took this, and this is actually just zip tied on here. We have it off here, but we actually just simply took this and we built a box bar, and then I simply glued these brackets here and uh, overlap them. This wing could actually be a two-piece wing if it wasn't mm -hmm. for that tail on there, but there was zero give whatsoever uh, on there. We have two sets of these uh, these patterns, and if you guys are interested, there's a little bit of trimming. Um, I'm gonna throw up the plans as it is right now, and you're gonna see that you'll be able to build everything, but you're gonna have to do some fitting to get that final cut. It's not gonna be a speedboat mm -hmm. kit, but I'd be more than happy to post the plans. But you can go all the way out here, and you can lift this up. It actually, it's so incredibly stiff. strong. Yeah. So uh, it's amazing what you can do with foam board. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as these nacelles here, this is off of the uh, yeah the, the C119 cabbie, yep. the C119 design uh, that we did. Are those the booms too? Huh? This is even the same. Uh, this is even the same motor mount. Oh. I just used okay. that and I just reshaped the uh, the form of that, and that way it gave the uh, the look of the booms. Mm -hmm. But it had it, it looks good though. It looks like it was it belongs on an airplane. Well, ho hopefully it'll inspire you guys to kind of take a step outside and to. Uh, to make something different. Mm -hmm. But uh, the higher the higher wing was just to get it away from the snow because water and foam don't get along. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, you seem to have some little taxiing issues of yours because oh, I had a little skids of mine so I wouldn't flip over as fast. I kept digging in wingtips. It was really <laughs> embarrassing. I had to do the walk of shame in cold weather. But that's how I did mine. Um, as far as just simple construction, vertical plywood braces was really the, the key to success with this one. Mm -hmm. Now you did a whole nother thing and it fascinates me because it's a material we've never built out of before. Yep. Let's talk about yours. <laughs> sure. Yeah, this is very awkward. What's your wingspan on this? Mine, mine I don't is even like know. about 100 inches. Yours has to be bigger. Probably bigger, yeah. Now, what did you do, brother? Uh, I played with cardboard. I wanted to try something a little different because mm -hmm. um, this is a precursor to something I might try in the future. Uh, more hint, on that hint. later. Yeah. Hint, hint. But I wanted to try cardboard for an airfoil and all that. And actually, surprisingly, it turned out pretty well. This is the remains of it. It's been beat up, so you can see it's got dings and dents. I wrote in it. This is all buckled. This is broken. <laughs> That's busting out. But for the entire flight and um, the time we used it, it worked great. It stayed in pretty good shape. Now, obviously, you, you didn't build a spar here. You used uh, a remainder of something that was left over, didn't you? Yeah. What's that? These are actually our flight test foam boxes. Yeah. That's what these are made out of. And the uh, airfoil, they're just like, there's like uh, four ribs on each side. And funny thing is, this is a terribly irresponsible thing to do, but cardboard is so strong, it worked just fine. This spar only goes into the wing about this far. 
Is it does it not go any further than that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, is that's this, a terrible way to design an airplane. Wh where did the spar come from? Uh, that is from the microwave plane. From, the, from what's left of the microwave yeah, plane, right? Yeah, that spar is mangled up, so I just cut off the small usable straight section and it's in the wing now. Yeah, generally the further out you go on the wing, the less stress you have mm -hmm. there. So by extending your spars out further, mm -hmm. you actually increase your strength uh, exponentially. Yep, and this is not the way to do that because the spar <laughs> goes this far, so it's putting all that stress on that cardboard. So the first time I ran this thing around, uh, I noticed that we'd dig in and then the well, this started getting all wet and cardboard and water don't exactly mix. Yeah. So I had to put these little sleds on here and this actually worked great because then I could turn with a differential and steer all around the snow just fine. Oh, very cool. Now, how did you establish where your CG was going to be on this? What's the general rule of thumb? There, there's, we both mm -hmm. buy by it. Yep, about uh, one third or one fourth of the leading edge, somewhere in between that. Yep. So basically roughly around here to about here, somewhere in that area is where I try first at the CG. If you guys are ever designing an airplane and you're kind of curious as where it is, it's always better to favor a little bit nose heavy. So that's usually about the 25% mark. Yep. And then you can start backing it towards the 30. Planes like Mustangs and certain types of wings actually fly in the 20% area mm -hmm. on their center of gravity. And if you have the plane balanced out, at least you're gonna feel the performance because if it's too tail heavy, the elevator's not gonna work properly, the mm -hmm. controls aren't gonna work properly. But if it's too nose heavy, the tail's gonna have to fight that. Yep. And most likely you're gonna have things like high speed stalls. Yep. And You'll, you'll, you'll be you'll feel you'll be constantly that by adding more elevator to hold your nose up at a proper out, at angle of attack and if you're too far tail heavy you won't have any control basically you'll crash yeah. generally if you have very sluggish pitch control and you're constantly mm -hmm. fighting that nose from dropping it's obviously nose heavy mm -hmm. if you're having tracking issues it's most likely tail heavy yep remember nose heavy flies flies poorly, poorly. tail heavy flies only once and yes. just once there's a lot of truth to that how do you fasten it to the uh to the I hot glued it on. I was then, wondering, did you seriously do that? I seriously did that, and then I drilled two holes where the uh, aluminum boom is and ran one zip tie on each side, and it's still attached to the sled. I can't believe it. I was that. so sure it would fall off or something when I would do some real sketchy pull-ups and stall uh, turns, but it's, it held in there the, during the entire duration. I love the build-off concept because there's two total different directions. And this here, um, we don't talk about this much, but you did this on the microwave plane. What do they call this? Is it a drag and... I don't even know what they are. I just put some strings in there because right. it, it looked like it, it stabilized it some, kept it a little less twisty. Oh, this so I just went with it. This seems old school to me, but I think what they call this is drag and anti-drag wires. Mm -hmm. And that was like popular on the Jennies and a I lot of planes for rigging. Today. Yeah, drag and anti-drag. <laughs> Basically, you have one wire pulling against the other and it actually trambles out the plane and keeps everything. Because mm -hmm. if you had this without that, it would start wobbling really mm -hmm. badly. Yeah, it did. And actually, I did a couple of flights beforehand because this thing flies really, really, really slowly. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter if this plane was flying like 50 miles an hour if I had the elevator down there because yeah. I would have all the airflow I needed to get going. But the problem is this thing like puts around like 10 miles an hour. And generally short coupled planes with mm -hmm. a very minimal spot right here generally have that pocket of air that kind of escapes over the mm -hmm. elevator. So you'll find yourself in a constant direction and suddenly your elevator authority will go away. The yep. only way you can get away from that is by using your throttle and blasting some air over mm -hmm. it. The old uh, slow poke sport 40s used to be notorious. You'd be in a constant dive and suddenly you'd have no authority and it's because <laughs> the air actually traveled and pocketed mm -hmm. over that or elevator. Like, yeah, and you'd be in that little dead air area and you wouldn't be able to yep. control it. And that's yep. kind of what I had. I almost wrecked it. Yep. I was going like, yep. I had to pull the throttle off, nail the throttle on and just kind of drive it and land. I was like, oh, this I had to fix that. So now that you got this done, what's the next weird thing you want to make fly? Because we still have some more winter. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's leave it up to the guys in the comments. Let us know. If That's where everything comes from. If there's something that you guys want to see in the future and there's something that you guys have laying around, it's like, I wonder if we can make it fly. We love this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's definitely fun. And actually, for you guys, uh, you guys can be inspired by this too. It's not just for us. Just build something and post an article on our website. It's a great way to get views and stuff out there and show your showcase your work. Main point of this video was to give you guys some ideas where you can take everyday objects, use some really practical, mm -hmm. simple methods, and get some success out of it. Because there really wasn't all that much here. We just went at it. It was a lot. It's not that. It's not much rocket science. It's a little bit airplane science. Now we just got to get ourselves in the air for real. And I think that's coming real soon. I think it is. Friends, I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. I can't walk anywhere. It's too big. <laughs>